And she, this is the woman again, brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. Does that phrase sound familiar to you? It should. It occurs four places in the scripture at least. Who was to rule all the nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up to, unto God and to his throne. Now, <laughs> for many, many years, as I read verse 5, I recognized, of course, that the woman is Israel. The man-child is who? Jesus Christ. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. And I just took for granted. That's an allusion to what? The ascension, right? You picture Acts chapter 1. You see him going up there and there's two men watching. Those same two men are the ones at the resurrection. Those two men are not angels. They're men. I believe they're Moses and Elijah. But anyway, um, it was G.H. Pember, I believe, back probably like maybe 1914. He was the first that I encountered at least that saw this as possibly alluding to something else. Not the ascension, but the rapture. Her child, the body of Christ, was caught up to God in his throne. That could be an allusion to the ascension, no problem. It also might be an allusion to the body of Christ caught up in the rapture. Because the word caught up there in the Greek is, guess what? Harpazo. Snatched. The same word that occurs in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Certainly the child is Jesus Christ. You picked up on that. The rule of the rod of, he rules with a rod of iron. That's an echo from Psalm 2 where it says, Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. And that's the son of God there alluded to. And in, in Psalm 2 is a, a trialogue between the Father, Holy Spirit, and the Son. You want to diagram that uh, short psalm sometime and figure out who's, who's saying what to whom. Um, we recognize, of course, from our study of Revelation 2 in the letter to Thyatira, he shall rule them with the rod, speaking of Jesus Christ, he shall rule them with a rod of iron as the vessels of a potter. They shall be broken and shivers as even as I have received from my father. And the adversary of the woman here in this chapter, she brought forth a man child who is to rule all the nations with a rod of iron and a child who is caught up to God and to his throne. And then uh, we'll find it in Revelation 19, when the big climax and out of his mouth goeth forth a sharp sword, that it, with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness of the wrath of Almighty God, and hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Who's that? Anyone, anyone have a doubt about that? Okay, no problems. No problem in that identity. So she brought forth a man child to rule all nations with, uh, with a uh, rod of iron, and a child is caught by God. Um, it's interesting because if this is an allusion to the rapture, the next verse is going to talk about the great tribulation. And so you could sense then there seems to be a gap of time between verse 5 and verse 6. You follow me? Because verse 5 speaks of Jesus Christ being caught up to heaven. Verse 6 talks about the great tribulation where the woman is going to be dealt with in for 42, 42 months and so forth. So there is an implied gap between verse 5 and 6. That's the same gap you find in Daniel chapter 9 between verse 25, uh, 25 and 27. Verse 26 is an interruption between the 69th week and the 7th week. You follow me? How many of those gaps are there in the Bible? 24. We'll list them in your notes so you have it as part of your background. But it fascinates me is not only is it prevalent all through the scripture, Old and New Testament. Uh, another example, when Jesus opens his ministry in uh, uh, Luke 4 and he's in the synagogue of Nazareth, he takes the book of Isaiah and he finds that place where it is written and he reads those verses and then he says, this day is this fulfilled in your ears. You remember? He is reading from Isaiah 61, verse 1 and 2. But when you study that carefully and look at Isaiah 61, verse 1 and 2, and read what Jesus said, he stopped at a comma, closed the book, and said, this day is that fulfilled. That's kind of weird. You go back, what followed the comma? The day of vengeance of our God. The whole concatenation of all the phrases that described his ministry, healing the sick and declaring the, uh, God and so forth. But he stops at that comma because part two 
wasn't fulfilled then, that comma has lasted about 2,000 years. When he comes back, that's what he'll be dealing with, the day of vengeance. So that's another one of those commas, uh, one of these uh, gaps or intervals. What fascinates me, if you make a list from cover to cover of the Bible where those gaps appear, there's 24 of them. And I find that kind of interesting because we went through all that with the 24 elders, didn't we? As being representative of what? The church, which is what that interval is all about. So I'll let you run with that in your own studies. But the word caught up is harpazo. It's the same word. It means to seize, carry off by force, to seize on, to claim for one's self eagerly, to snatch out of the way. When Jesus arose in Acts 1, I didn't see, sense that he was being snatched away, taken by force. You follow me? That's the word here. So I think G.H. Pember um, uh, may have something, that this may be an allusion uh, to the rapture, interestingly enough.